other ratios. We saw that there are four categories of ratios. Profitability ratios, liquidity ratios, efficiency ratios, and investment ratios. In the last lesson, we studied the main profitability ratio, the ROCE, for return on capital employed. The general format of a profitability ratio is a measure of profitability divided by a measure of the means used by the firm to generate this profitability. The ROCE was defined as the operating result divided by the capital employed. And we saw that this nicely gets rid of the structure of the capital employed. It's the same value whether we have a lot of equity and little debt or a lot of debt and little equity. In the last case, it's called a high leverage. Another profitability ratio is the return on equity, defined as the net result divided by equity. And whenever I write such a value from the balance sheet on the denominator, I mean the average value over the year, usually the beginning value plus the end value divided by two. So the ROE is the net result on equity. Uh, here is a, a sequence of uh, figures, the initial balance sheet, the income statement, and the end balance sheet. So the ROE is the net result of 60 divided by the average value of equity, that is 370 plus 400 divided by two, that's 385. And 60 divided by 385 is 15.6%. It is not a very meaningful measure uh, of the profitability of the firm because equity here is a book value. It's a value produced by accounting and it's usually quite different from the market value of shares and the market value of equity, in other words. Indeed, we are reaching the limits of accounting as a descriptive model of the firm. Time plays a simplistic role in accounting. And we shall see in a course in finance a much more sophisticated role of time. It's even a topic still open for research. Book value and market value of shares. So here is a balance sheet and we see the equity. Suppose that the initial capital here, 300, was made of 300 shares, each with a face value of one. Say the units is thousands of euros. So this is a 300,000 euros. Well, the value today of shares uh, is not one. It's not even 370 divided by 300, which would yield 1.23 thousand euros. These shares, they have a market value, which is the market appraisal of the value today of the future cash flows of the firm. And these shares may be liquid or not, but at any rate, they are negotiated on stock markets at a price which is neither uh, this figure nor that figure. The other profitability ratios are also ratios of the form of profit divided by some measure of the size of the firm. One of them is the return on assets. It's the net result divided by the total assets. But the same comment applies. Uh, we saw that the assets is a least rather heterogeneous of values, and therefore this uh, ratio is not very meaningful. And one that is very common, even though it's even worse, is the return on sales. It's the net result divided by sales. But sales is a very poor measure of the size of the firm uh, or the means used by the firm to, pro to produce a profit. But at any rate, it's a ratio that uh, we meet uh, quite often in the uh, financial uh, literature. Let's turn to liquidity ratios. The main one is called the current asset ratio, and it's defined as the current assets divided by the current liabilities. And I equate the current liabilities to the free debt. Current asset ratio, so here is a balance sheet with the current assets, 
and the current liabilities. Uh, once again, I equate that to the free debt, although there's a little bit of uh, uh, costly debt that becomes current uh, on a regular basis, of course. So to understand the importance of this ratio, let's think of the current asset as some sort of a stock or bathtub of liquidity. And this is used to pay uh, liabilities, that is credits, as they come due. And if we had a very little stock here, well, we would have to be pretty sure of the flow of liquidity in order to make sure that we are always in a position to pay what comes due. Whereas if we have a stock like that, a buffer, uh, there is less risk. So if the current assets are much less than the current liabilities, there is danger. We then have to be pretty sure of the inflows of cash uh, in order to face this payment. Whereas when we have a buffer, a buffer stock, there is less risk. In other words, the current asset ratios, when it's much less than one, there is danger. And conversely, when it's much more than one, it's a waste of money because we have too much liquidity or not enough uh, current liabilities. So that's what I explained. Uh, since the idea behind the current asset ratio is we want our liquidities to jive with the short-term liabilities, and since in inventories are not very liquid, sometimes instead of using the uh, current asset on top, we use current assets minus the stocks, that is even more liquid stuff, divided by current liabilities, and it's called the uh, acid test ratio. Let's turn to efficiency ratios. It's a, these are measures of the efficiency of uh, management of the assets of the firm. We shall look at stocks and debtors account. First of all, stock. There's a ratio called the stock turnover. Uh, remember that our stock here feeds the cogs. So we want it to be used efficiently, the stocks here, or the average stock. So the stock turnover is uh, uh, defined as the COGS, which are computed from these three figures, you will remember, COGS divided by stocks. And we want this to be high because we want the stock somehow to turn uh, fast. Here are the calculation. The COGS here are uh, 130 plus 500 minus 50, that's 580. And the average stock here is 130 plus 50 divided by 2, that's 90. So here the stock turnover is 580 divided by 90, that's 6.4. Uh, in other words, our stock somehow turns 6.4 times uh, per year on average. In other words, the goods, think of a steady flow of everything, remain a little, uh, a little less than two months in stocks. There's a lot, more, a lot more to say about stocks and I will devote a lesson on that. That will be the next lesson because we want stocks to be low but sometimes uh, stocks that are too low are a bad sign and I will explain that uh, in the next lesson. Let's finish up with client paper. Something called the debtor collection ratio is the uh, client account, that is debtor's account divided by the sales on credit. And sometimes it's expressed in a number of days. It's the number of days of the data collection, in other words, when we multiply by 365. The calculation here are these. Suppose that all these sales are on credit. We, we need the figure of the sales specifically on credit. And we shall compare that to the average client account, which here is the uh, 235. So 235 divided by 1000, that's 23.5 percent. And that corresponds to 86 days. 86 days, that's almost three months. That is, this firm doesn't get paid uh, very quickly by its clients. Last, investment ratios. Let's talk only about one of them called the PER or PE for price earning ratio is the market value of equity divided by the net result. But I won't uh, talk much about investment ratios in this course in accounting. 
because as I said, accounting gives a poor description of financial uh, concepts. So we shall talk about investment ratios in another course in finance.